A few years ago, I watched one of my favorite YouTubers, John Campier, say something interesting. And I'm paraphrasing, but bear with me. The day will come when you will be paying as much for streaming as you did for cable. And I laughed. <laughs> but this week Disney Plus dropped, and that brings the total to six. Yes, six streaming services. I'm not gonna even try and include Hey You. But if you like reality TV, then yeah, get that. How are you famous? But this includes Netflix, Stan, Amazon Prime, Apple TV, and 10 All Access. So which one should you get? And which one is best suited for your needs? Let's break that down. <laughs> So the best way to look at this is I'm going to break down the highlights of each channel, what kind of content they bring, and their price point. Then at the end of the video, I'll sum up which has the best TV, movies, variety of content, and overall value depending on what you like and the price range. And I have a feeling you're going to learn something new. So, Netflix. Netflix is the big OG on the block. Starting out with a lot more content than it currently has, now as the rights of different properties have moved from service to service. Netflix, however, has invested a lot of time and money into original content programming. This is good. This puts them in control of the shows. Which in turn means that they will be more permanent on the channel. Some highlights include Brooklyn Nine-Nine, Mad Men, Rick and Morty, Lucifer, Bojack Horseman, Summer Heights High, The Inbetweeners, Archer, and Stranger Things. And for movies, we have The Dark Knight, Pineapple Express, The Other Guys, The Harry Potter series, Snatch, Tag, and Adam Sandler. Yes, he gets his own little box. Also, The Irishman is about to show on Netflix, and I'd highly recommend it. If you haven't seen my review for it, go check it out after this. It'll be in the end credits. With a price point of $9.99, it comes in at the higher end of the streaming prices. Netflix has a lot to offer, wide variety, original shows, and for me personally, it has some of my all-time favourite shows. Rick and Morty and Nine Nine are shows that I just watch in the background on a daily basis. Nine Nine! Why is it when I say it, it never sounds as good as Terry Crews? It also has a little bit of a mm, bad vibe to it. Nine Nine, that's better. Amazon Prime. Now, don't click away. I know what you're probably thinking. Amazon Prime? Does that have anything good on it at all? Jacob, you idiot. It's for shipping services. Uh, yeah, guys. It's one of the best. Seinfeld, Two and a Half Men, The Office, Jack Ryan, Heroes, Community, Downtown Abbey, and Freaks and Geeks. Guys, if you haven't checked out Freaks and Geeks, it is a great, great show. I might be making a video about them eventually, so good segue into subscribe if you haven't. Thank you. It also has a lot of kids shows, Angela Anaconda, Spongebob, and there's also a lot of anime. Movies include Venom, Fight Club, Ace Ventura, Catch Me If You Can, Spider-Man, nearly every Quentin Tarantino movie, The Scream franchise, and Jurassic Park. And if you saw my last video, it has Goodwill Hunting. I'd highly recommend it. Amazon Prime also has other benefits. If you buy stuff from Amazon, you might be entitled to free delivery or discounts or bundle deals. And if you already have Amazon Prime for delivery, have a look. You've probably got the streaming service as well. And to add fuel to the fire, it also comes in at $6.99 a month, which puts it at the cheapest of the streaming services. Now, Stan. No, not the song, the service. Stan's a tough one. It's close to Netflix with its original programming, variety of movies and TV, with shows like Breaking Bad, Misfits, Underbelly, Lost, Little Britain, Friends, and Scrubs. But a lot of these shows you can also get on multiple services anyway, and they're not so much exclusive to Stan. Shows like Seinfeld, Fraser, The Office, Parks and Rec, you can get them on a couple of channels. But they do have movies like the Mission Impossible franchise, The Castle, Forrest Gump, the whole entire Bond franchise. I can't wait for Bond's new movie, No Time to Die, but that's another video. Stan's also on par with Netflix with a $10 a month price point, and that brings us to 10 All Access. This isn't too flashy, and it doesn't have any movies, and the price should be lower. Like, way lower. It's $9.99 a month, the same price as Netflix and Stan, but it doesn't have movies, and it's just... Oh, come on, guys. That's just not good business. Lastly, the new kid on the block, Disney+. Plus. They muscled their way in with the best of the best content. Yeah, with honors. However, their content is quite niche when you think about it. That's why this is a tough one. And after checking it out, it does have some of the best content on there. Marvel, Star Wars, Disney, National Geographic, with shows like the 90s X-Men, Recess, Kim Possible, all the Saturday Disney nostalgic shows. There's also a new Star Wars series, The Mandalorian. It's pretty good. And don't forget, all 30 seasons of The Simpsons. It will take forever to get to the end. But it is giving me a flashback of nostalgia to Channel 10, 6 o'clock, Monday to Friday. If you 
know, you know. There's a lot more upcoming original movies and TV shows that are going to be exclusive for Disney+, Plus, including numerous Marvel series which are directly connected to the MCU. However, these are going to be rolled out over the next few years, so there's really no rush. And this seems really small and first world problems, I get it, but all the other streaming channels, they break their shows into different categories of comedy, drama, you get it, which Disney does as well. But the one feature I love is Disney Plus has an A to Z list, which no other streaming service has. I didn't realize I needed this until I realized I needed this, but it's so good to be able to just look from A to Z. There's stuff on Netflix that I don't even know is on there. Get out your pickets. And you're probably thinking at this point, I didn't mention Apple's streaming service at all. I've decided to take it out of the running. It has as close to nothing as you could imagine. So which one should you get? It honestly depends on your taste, but I'd narrow it down to Prime, Stan, and Netflix. They all have a great and wide selection of movies and shows, as well as original content. I'd personally bundle Prime, Netflix, and Disney, but if you can get one, and I'm saying one, Amazon Prime. That's right, I said it. Fight me, Netflix. Amazon Prime has such a wide variety of movies and TV, with bingeable shows, popular movie franchises, and great movies in general. It's the cheapest, and yet, the most value. Disney would be my second choice purely for the nostalgia and the Simpsons alone. However, if you want to wait until there's better content, that's okay too. Streaming is still so new and will continue to grow and shift, but as of right now in Australia, they're my picks. What streaming channel are you going with, and why? Is there a specific show you love to binge? Let me know in the comments below. I'm going to be picking someone for my next video to shout out, and thanks for this week to Mr. Anderson, and I get the reference. Great name. Speaking of which, if you like movies, I have new videos every week, so make sure to subscribe, turn on notifications, and leave a like if you liked it. I'm trying to get past the 100 sub mark by the end of the year. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and remember, whatever your passion, work hard and be lucky.